Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna discuss yet again about some curious things orchids do. So this would be the second episode of the series. However, this is more of a beginner episode. If you missed the first episode, check it down below in the description. And today we will discuss about some orchid behavior which you might already be acquainted with if you've grown orchids for quite a while. But for beginners, I suspect these things can be quite curious or at least unique. Alrighty, let us start. Now when it comes to orchid behavior, there are many many things that amaze us. One of which is the tendency of some orchids to simply climb out of the pot. The orchids most prone to do this are in the Oncidium alliance, but they're not the only ones. Brassias and Brassia hybrids are notorious for simply climbing out of the pot above the medium. So what do I mean by climbing? Well, let's take this orchid for example. We can see that one of the older pseudobulbs is this one, located quite a little bit under the medium. The next pseudobulb created by this orchid is slightly higher. The next one is even higher and the new growth, as we can see, is growing quite above the medium. Now in the past there was this advice slash rumor that articles kept mentioning. If an orchid starts to display this behavior, it means the medium is not to its liking or it's starting to decompose. This cannot be further from the truth. No matter how fresh and airy and clean the medium you provide is, the orchid will forever display the climbing tendency. And this is simply because its genetics tell it to do so. In nature, this orchid attaches to tree trunks, so its growth pattern has developed to extend more on a vertical than a horizontal since trunks are rarely on a horizontal. Therefore, by this growth pattern, it ensures that it still stays attached to the tree while having an upward position and utilizing the sunlight efficiently. So don't worry if some of your orchids start to display this. Managing it can be a little tricky. You can always add a top layer of sphagnum moss or just let it be if the roots continue to grow, they will eventually reach the medium if your humidity is high enough or if you have the possibility to ensure that this orchid receives adequate moisture, simply grow it mounted. It imitates how it would usually grow on a tree and you'll have no issues with the climbing tendency. On the opposite end, we can have descending orchids. I like to call them the descenders, but don't try to google the term, most probably you will find nothing because people don't really talk about this. In this category, you will most likely find Calia orchids, which, unlike the Oncidium family, tend to lower their new growth until they touch the medium or the surface you are growing your orchids on. The logic behind it might only have to do with the location in which that particular orchid is found in nature, or at least the parents of that hybrid. Calia orchids are higher light plants in comparison to Oncidiums and Brassias. In their natural habitat, they don't only grow on tree trunks, or should I say they don't prefer the tree trunks on lower heights. They usually grow on branches. In any case, the surfaces in which they grow, maybe, are not necessarily vertical, but rather horizontal or somewhere in between. Therefore, in order to be properly attached to a branch which is not vertical, an orchid will try to first feel the surface and then start to grow upwards. And this is a behavior that we can definitely observe in the example I have here. We can see that as long as the medium stays the same, the rhizome stays the same as well. However, this is an orchid that I repotted recently and as you can see, the newest pseudobulb it came with was quite a bit on top of the medium. Therefore, the new growth started to arch downwards until it touched the medium and afterwards it started to arch upwards, benefiting from the light. I suspect this is an adaptation trait developed to ensure that the orchid is properly anchored to the branch it grows on. If the orchid would continue to grow upwards, the roots would first have to grow into the air and search for the branch for quite a while until it found it. Being closer to the surface also means that the distance the roots have to travel is smaller as well. So chances are the new structure will get attached faster than if the orchid would be a climber. Roots of orchids are really curious creatures. Among others though, have you ever wondered how long an orchid root can be? Well, the answer is pretty long, indefinitely long actually, as long as it has the proper environment to grow. If you've ever seen orchid roots just swirling around the pot, well, that only means the roots simply grew indefinitely in the pot. But have you ever wondered what would happen if one of those roots simply grew outside of the pot? Well, here it is. It would grow pretty pretty long indefinitely and the root on my orchid is still growing as you can see 
The rest of this orchid's roots are in the pot, obviously, so they're not visible, but the aerial roots have the proper conditions to grow. Now in this example you can see that the roots started to grow downwards, but this is not a rule, not all aerial roots will start to grow downwards. If they're not heavy enough to fall under their weight and become pendulous, they will simply grow up yet again indefinitely, like the case of my dendrobium here. In this example, the root is not very thick, like in the case of the Cattleya, and it is pretty light. We can already see it starting to lean a little bit because of its weight, but for the main part, it is growing upwards and it's not showing signs of stopping. This is absolutely normal behavior. And yet again in the past there were some rumors that an orchid produces aerial roots which grow upwards away from the medium because the medium has become bad or is not suited for the orchid. Now, it's not entirely true, but it does have a true instance. So in my case, I have roots both in the pot and outside of the pot. But outside of the pot, I only have two aerial roots. Inside of the pot, I have more roots. In this case, we cannot really say that the medium is not suited for the circuit since I do have more roots in the pot that appear to grow very well. However, there is a case in which you will only have aerial roots and no roots inside the pot simply because they died. I believe in some cases orchids can avoid surfaces if they are not suited for growing and they will try to compensate with producing roots that will avoid those surfaces in search for something to attach to. If no root wants to grow inside the medium and you only have aerial roots, then yes, maybe there's something wrong with that medium or it's not to the root's liking. If you have 90% of the roots outside of the medium and 10% of the roots in the medium and you are not dealing with a climber orchid, then yet again, maybe there's something wrong with that medium and the orchid is trying to send out roots everywhere else except in the direction of the medium. However, if the majority of the roots are inside the pot and the medium and they're growing nicely and you have a few aerial roots as well, even 50-50, everything is okay and it's a pretty normal behavior for epiphytic orchids. Now there are some orchids on the market which never produce aerial roots and this is because they are terrestrial and not epiphytic, meaning they do not grow in air attached to trees. The most common terrestrial or semi-terrestrial orchids you'll find on the market are the Paphiopetalum orchids, also known as the slipper orchids due to the lovely pouch they display on the flower. With these orchids you will never see aerial roots growing outside of the pot. All of the roots should be and will be inside of the medium. Therefore, it's not a good idea to pot this orchid way above the medium, but rather stay a little bit buried. And this is because any root that will start to grow from the base of each fan will simply die off if it doesn't have humidity around it. So if you can see a new root growing from your Paphiopetalum very well, that's not a good sign and you should try to cover it somehow. You can use a bit of sphagnum moss, you don't have to put a thick layer. You can also add some more leca pebbles if you're using leca or an organic medium. Anything that can keep the root sheltered from extreme air exposure. Now one of the most common occurrences in orchid growing is damaging the aerial roots. It's just so easy to bump into our orchids or brush our clothes against their roots that it's inevitable at some point to just break a root tip. Not to worry though, because the root will absolutely not die. Chances are it will branch out. Like in this example, you can see the root tip has been damaged but coming from very close to the wound actually, there is another tip forming. Now, these additional branches can form anywhere on the length of the root. It doesn't have to be near the breaking point, but it's not uncommon for them to start here as well. When will they be formed? Well, that depends. This root was actually broken quite a few months ago, maybe five months ago, and it took so long until the root started to branch off. It really depends what the orchid is doing. Is it blooming? Is it creating a new growth? Is it in active growth mode or not? And so on. But don't worry if you manage to break a root or two, even if you manage to snap a root without breaking it completely, yet again don't worry, some orchids can absolutely bounce back from that and the root will remain alive even if it's snapped. Phalaenopsis orchids are notorious with this. Even if roots break off, if they don't completely detach, they will most likely function normally and remain alive on the orchid. Okay guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and remember if you missed the first part of the series, check it down below in the description. In that video we talk more about the really curious things that orchids can do. 
And you know the drill, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do, give it a thumbs down. A share would be wonderful. And if you would like to watch other ORCID videos from me on a regular basis, simply subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye! My recent acquisition, the Violacea, just straightened up her flower and isn't she gorgeous? I swear the color is just so pigmented, so so striking and the camera has some issues picking it up. In reality, it is um, darker and deeper than this. It shows up a little washed away on the camera. However, I don't feel a lot of fragrance. I do feel something. Reminds me a little bit of the Bellina, but not entirely. Not even sure how to describe it. So I'm not entirely sure about the fragrance, which is a little worrying. Hopefully it's just due to the transport and the circuit trying to adapt and adjust to my environment as fast as possible. Because I heard Violacea smell better than Bellina's. Mm, right now, not really, but we'll see.